Have a blessed day, everyone. My respect to our advanced educational psychology professor, Ma'am Nerisa Malco Beatrice. My name is Jonna Beltiga Milo. With me is Ma'am Maria Nymphati Rambuyong as your discussants. We will discuss about the theories of learning. No two persons are alike, and the way every person learns will vary. Our brains are all unique, and our experiences all contribute to the different ways we learn. To start with our discussion, let us define first what is learning. Learning is defined as a process that brings together personal and environmental experiences and influences for acquiring, enriching, or modifying one's knowledge, skills, values, attitudes, behavior, and worldviews, notes the International Bureau of Education. Generally, there are five primary educational learning theories. The first is behaviorism learning theory. The second is cognitive learning theory. The third is constructivism learning theory. The fourth is humanism learning theory. And the fifth is connectivism learning theory. Behaviorism learning theory. Behaviorism or the behavioral learning theory is a popular concept that focuses on how students learn. Behaviorism focuses on the idea that all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment. This learning theory states that behaviors are learned from the environment and says that innate or inherited factors have very little influence on behavior. Behaviorism started as a reaction against introspective psychology in the 19th century, which relied heavily on first-person accounts. J.B. Watson and B.F. Skinner rejected introspective methods as being subjective and unquantifiable. These psychologists wanted to focus on observable, quantifiable events and behaviors. They said that science should take into account only observable indicators. They helped bring psychology into higher relevance by showing that it could be accurately measured and understood and it was not just based off opinions. A common example of behaviorism is positive reinforcement. A student gets a small treat if they get 100% on their spelling test. In the future, students work hard and study for their best in order to get the reward. Pavlov, through his famous salivating dog experiment, showed that the stimulus, in this case ringing a bell every time he fed the dog, caused the dog to eventually start salivating when he heard a bell ring. The dog associated the bell ring with being provided with food, so any time a bell was rung, the dog started salivating. It had learned that the noise was a precursor to being fed. Next theory is the cognitive learning theory. The cognitivist theory replaced behaviorism during the 1960s as a more dominant learning paradigm. Cognitivism concentrates on the mental activities of the learner's mind. It considers that learning about those activities is valuable and necessary to understand how we learn. To understand cognitive learning theory, it's important to learn the term metacognition. Metacognition is the awareness of your brain's thoughts and thought processes. This concept of knowing how you think is the basis for cognitive learning theory. The cognitive theory has an interesting and unique history. Plato and Descartes are two of the first philosophers 
to dive deeply into the theory of cognitive behavior and knowledge. Their ideas about knowledge and behavior is spurred further thoughts on cognition. Cognitivism, concentrating on the mental activities of the mind. Cognitivism counter the behaviorist theory stating people are not programmable test subjects that merely respond to environmental stimuli. Instead, they are rational beings who can take active participation in learning and whose actions are a consequence of their thoughts. Cognitivism considers the mind as an analytical machine like a computer. Information comes in, it gets processed, and causes certain outcomes. Next learning theory is the constructivism. This is based on the idea that people actively construct or make their own knowledge and that reality is determined by your experiences as a learner. Basically, learners use their previous knowledge as a foundation and build on it with new things that they learn. So everyone's individual experiences make their learning unique to them. Constructivism is crucial to understand as an educator because it influences the way all of your students learn. Teachers and instructors that understand the constructivist learning theory understand that their students bring their own unique experiences to the classroom every day. Constructivism, the learning is based on experiences from the environment. A common misconception about the constructivist theory is that instructors should not instruct anything directly to the students, but instead should always allow them to construct knowledge for themselves. This actually confuses it as a theory of knowing without teaching. Constructivism believes that all knowledge is constructed from the learner's previous knowledge, disregarding how one is taught. So even lectures from the instructor belong to the activities intended for the construction of new knowledge. Humanism Learning Theory This theory and approach in education takes root in humanistic psychology with the key concepts focusing on the idea that children are good at the core and that education should focus on rational ways to teach the whole child. The humanistic learning theory was developed by Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, and James F. T. Bugintal in the early 1900s. This theory states that the student is the authority on how they learn and that all of their needs should be met in order for them to learn well. For example, a student who is hungry would have as much attention to give to learning. So schools offer meals to students so that need is met and they can focus on education. The humanistic theory approach engages social skills, feelings, intellect, artistic skills, practical skills, and more as part of their education. Self-esteem, goals, and full autonomy are key learning elements in the humanistic learning theory. Connectivism learning theory. This is a relatively new learning theory that suggests students should combine thoughts, theories, and general information in a useful manner. It accepts that technology is a major part of the learning process and that our constant connectedness gives us opportunities to make choices about our learning. Connectivism was first introduced in 2005 by two tourists, George Simons and Stephen Downs. It also promotes group collaboration and discussion, allowing for different viewpoints and perspectives when it comes to decision-making, problem-solving, and making sense of information. Connectivism promotes learning that happens outside of an individual, such as through social media, online networks, blogs, or information databases.
Good morning everyone. Let me continue our topic with the additional learning theories. So we have we have three additional learning theories. Number one is the transformative learning theory. Number two is the social learning theory. And number three is the experiential learning theory. So what is transformative learning theory? Transformative learning theory is a great approach for adult education and young adult learning. This is also referred to as transformation learning. Transformative learning theory focuses on the idea that learners can adjust their thinking based on new information. So number two is the social learning theory. This is a valuable tool for dealing with difficult students who like to disrupt the classroom and cause trouble. This theory focuses on the concept of children learning from observing others by acting on or not acting on what they see exhibited by their classmates. So what to know about social learning theory? Number one, people can learn through observation. Number two, mental states are important to learning. And number three, Learning does not necessarily lead to behavior change. So let's come now to the four elements to social learning theory. Number one is the attention. Attention calls upon different or unique lessons or activities to help children focus. Number two, retention. Retention focuses on how the student will internalize information and recall it later on. And number three, is the reproduction. Reproduction is drawing on previously learned behavior and when it is appropriate to use it. And number four is the motivation. Motivation can extend from seeing other classmates being rewarded or punished for their actions. So let's come now to the experiential learning. The experiential theory of learning proposed by David Kolb in 1984 suggests that it is a combination of experiences, emotions, and environmental factors that influences the learning process. So, according to David Kolb's learning cycle, number one is the experience. Experience can be direct or mediated. Number two is the reflection or the implication. Number three is the conclusion or the insights leading to decision. And number four is test or the experimentation. So experiential learning theory focuses on learning by doing. By using this theory, students are encouraged to learn through experiences that can help them retain information and recall facts. So we have now the four stages on how to apply learning theories in teaching. Number one is experiencing. Experience, experiencing style meaning you are engaged, connected, warm, and intuitive. And number two is reflecting. Reflecting is the process of paraphrasing and restating both the feelings and words of the speaker. And number three is thinking. Throughout the experiential learning process, the learners is actively engaged in posing questions, investigating, experimenting, being curious, solving problems, and being creative. And number four is acting. Acting is the application of knowledge to a real world. So according to Benjamin Franklin, he says that, Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So that would be all. Thank you. Sorry na tutin mababayad din. Then, then, I guess I didn't know.